Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Today I want to talk to you about how not to use your blending inks. What could you have done wrong in the past that may have given you a less than perfect result? We're going to fix all of these imperfections and I'm going to show you my top tips for ink blending absolutely perfectly. Now we're going to be covering not only the tools that you need to use, the cardstock and paper that you need to go on to, but also technique and cleaning your tools as well. As always, I'd love it if you could just drop this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it, and of course, ensure that you are subscribed to my channel. So let's cover paper or cardstock first. Now I'm going to be quite controversial with this one, but this is absolutely my preference and what I found works best for me. So paper cardstock, you'd usually be told you need to go onto a smooth cardstock. Yes, you used to have to go onto a smooth cardstock. When we used to use blending foams like these, because of the flat surface, we couldn't get into the grain of a cardstock and it was much harder to blend the ink around. Now with two things, with blending brushes being absolutely huge in the craft industry and most people sort of converting to using brushes instead as well as me but also with the addition of a distress oxides which have a pigment and that sits on top of the paper this makes blending into a textured cardstock or paper much much easier now it does make sense that when we blend onto a smooth cardstock, because of the smoothness of the surface, the ink can move around a lot better and we can get easier blending. And yes, this does happen, but because the ink kind of sits on top of the surface of the paper rather than soaking in, it's really easy to then add things like fingerprints to our surface, which of course will ruin the effect of any of our projects. I've also found that with some really smooth cardstocks and papers, depending on the quality of them, that you'll get this kind of really uneven finish when everything's dry. And I can only put that down to the construction of the paper and how it's absorbing the inks at different rates throughout the cardstock. So my controversial opinion here is that I love to use watercolour cardstock for blending on. It just holds the ink beautifully. It's a really heavyweight cardstock. There's never any warping. I can add water to it as well afterwards if I like. Because watercolour cardstock is created to take wet mediums, it works beautifully and I do get time to blend this without any issues. Now what I do also find is using a brush is perfect on these. It gets within the grain of the cardstock and I just find overall I always get a much smoother and more even finish. Of course this is only if you don't mind that your base is slightly off-white. There's very few watercolour cardstocks that are actually bright white. This doesn't bother me because I'm actually putting colour all over the surface of the paper usually so it's really not an issue. With watercolour cardstock I've also found that I can really deepen the colour if I want to by going over in layers. This watercolour cardstock is my go-to, I share it in a lot of my videos and I will link it down below for you as well. Now you need to be really careful that there's absolutely no moisture either on your craft mat, on your paper or on your brush. So if I've just got a tiny bit of water on my mat there. I've probably not noticed it. It could be just moisture from cleaning up my mat from earlier mediums maybe. If I go in and blend this side, this should be relatively dry. And then I start bringing over water from this side, we're going to start getting a real issue of separation there. And these inks are water reactive, so what's going to happen? You're going to get reactions. This is also going to happen if your brush is damp. So you're going to have problems with things kind of not going on smoothly. Here I've got some kind of stippling going on, areas catching the ink more than others because this brush is damp. Now the best thing to do when you do wash and clean your brushes is allow them to air dry for at least 24 hours and then take a piece of kitchen towel and push them into the bristles to make sure you're absorbing every last bit of moisture afterwards before using them. This goes the same for greasy fingerprints as well, so try not to handle your cardstock too much, particularly if you have a lot of oils like hand creams on your hands all the time. Speaking of cleaning brushes, it is important to do this regularly. So this brush has been used quite a few times and left 
with ink in it sitting in my craft room not being cleaned so now what happens is this is really hard to get a good build up of color so the brushes of the bristles they're not picking up the ink they're just not able to hold on to the ink because they're already saturated with dried ink it's kind of just getting in the way imagine painting a room leaving the paintbrush to go hard with paint on and then trying to pick up paint and brush again it's just not going to happen sometimes you need to just wash them let me show you the difference a perfectly clean brush will make in exactly the same way so just picking that up look at the color transfer immediately so so much easier and quicker so now techniques for color blending and if you've seen my distress ink and oxide color combination videos i talk about a lot of these techniques throughout each and every one of the videos but let's wrap it up into one here for you so i'm going to start with uh let's start with peacock feathers these are two of my favourite colours, Peacock Feathers and Seedless Preserves. I absolutely love these on their own and I love them separately. But let's blend the two in together. So first of all, I'm going to make sure my hand is completely grease free. Ideally, washing them with soapy water and thoroughly drying them is ideal. Otherwise, take yourself something like a dry piece of kitchen towel to put over the paper and hold it still so that you're not transferring any oils or moisture. So I'm going to load up my blending brush, which was previously clean before today. So I know that it's uh, not got an overload of ink on there. And I'm going to start at one edge. I always start at an edge and I always work in small circles. By working in small circles, the bristles of the brush are able to access and get into every little nook and cranny, every little dink and um imperfection on the cardstock or paper and at every angle so we get a really smooth block color now i'm going to focus first of all on building up my solid color i'm not even thinking about the blend line yet i'm reapplying ink every few seconds and i'm working in tiny tiny circles going back over that solid color if i think i need it so I'm going with two colours here. So I'm going to fill in with solid colour around about a third for each of the colours on the end. And then the middle third will be where my blend is. So I've filled in about a third there of solid colour. Now every time I reapply ink, I'm going to start back in the solid colour and then work into the blend. So from here, I'm just going to lighten the pressure on my brush. Usually I do apply, apply quite a bit of pressure while I'm working on the solid. When I start working on the blend here, I'm going to apply very light pressure, continuing in those small circles, just like so. And I'm just now not going to apply any more ink, just for now. And I'm just going to work around in circles until I've got a really nice fade from that solid colour in the first third that we did to about halfway along and it's faded out to almost to white. I'm happy with that, I'm going to do a lot more work in a moment, but for a starting point, that's great. Let's clean up my mat, but because I've used a wet wipe to clean my mat, I'm going to need to use a dry towel to make sure there's no moisture on my mat. As we saw earlier, we don't want to transfer any moisture. Then I'm going to come to my second color. This is the Seedless Preserves. I'm going to load up my brush. I'm going to make sure I've got a dry towel holding my panel down. And I'm going to start from the other end. I'm going to work in small circles again, dragging that off the mat. So I'm always working on a clear mat as well. These clear mats that I use can be found in my description, a link to them, they're from Craft Stash, and you get a large one and a small one in a pack. So again, I'm concentrating now on around about a third of this panel and I'm just going to focus on the solid colour first, making sure that is really nice and even. So working around in circles, it doesn't matter if you work clockwise or anti-clockwise, back or forth, either way, whatever suits you best. I tend to go anti-clockwise because I'm right-handed. I don't know what difference it makes, probably none at all. Now I've filled in my third and that's nice solid colour. I'm going to just lighten the pressure on my brush now. Again, putting my brush first down into the solid colour and then lightly moving it up and blending that gorgeous purple colour 
up until it's reaching the turquoise. There we go. Now, as you notice, I haven't applied any more ink for now. I'm making mo the most of the ink that's already on the brush. As I've only got a little bit on there, it makes it easier to get this lovely fade. So what I've now got is the deep dark colour on the two ends fading into light and we can just see where they've started to blend here. Now we can work on blending these two together a bit more. So adding a bit more ink, I'm going to carry on with purple because I'm this end. And I'm going to bring my kitchen towel down so I can see more of the blended section that we're going to do here. I'm going to start on this solid part, always put, I'm never going to put my brush here. This is going to leave me with a big oval of solid ink in a colour that I don't want because I don't want this colour here, I want the blended colour here. So I'm going to put my ink down here first of all, in circles, start working up, going side to side across my panel and lightly lifting the brush up as I work into that turquoise colour. Again, I'm not applying any more. I'm lifting, ever, this is ever so light and there's so little ink left on the brush now that it's not really applying any more. And I'm going to come back down again. So we can already see where that blend has started happening here. Now a clean up because the last thing I want to do is turn my cardstock, my panel round and blend purple into the green. So a good clean up, make sure you are drying the mat. And now we're going to come back to that first color we did, load up with ink just the once for now, put your brush down on the solid color, and we're going to go back the other way now. So we're adding more green to this section a lot of the work is done there for us already but now we need to bring the green up in or the turquoise up into the purple so you carry on in little circles up and down up and down or back and forth across your panel this is obviously going to take more time if it's a larger panel and you can see I'm dragging that sort of that purple blend up into there into the seedless preserves until it gets to the point where actually I'm not bringing any more up. We're not making much difference at all. And there we've got the two. Now, this is where I tend to sort of come back and just tweak a little bit. And I don't tend to do this with anything on my brush. I tend to do it with what's already sitting on the brush, if anything, and make use of, with the oxides, the pigment that's sitting on the surface. I'm pretty happy with that. Now what I find is any imperfections that you have will always smooth out as the panel dries. However, a little tip for you, if you've done some ink blending and you're not really happy with how it's turned out, even after it's dried, just take yourself some water and do a little bit of a splat. So you can either do a fine mist, which will give you a nice overall sort of mottling on the surface, or you can spritz into your hand and you can flick some larger spots on there. This is great if you like distressed looks. You'll see that start to work almost instantly, but you can kind of take the water off when you're happy with how much it's worked. So again, kitchen towel, dry kitchen towel, and you only ever want to do this at the very end when you're sure you're not going to do any more ink blending. And lift that up and we've now got this splattered mottled look that we see so often within Ranger and Tim Holtz projects. Um, it's, it really is sort of a signature style but it works so well with the water reactive properties of the Distress Oxides. Now if you've got more confidence with your actual ink blending but you're not sure about putting colours together then this playlist here is going to be absolutely perfect for you for choosing your colours depending on what distress oxides you already have in your stash. Thank you for watching me everybody, take care and I'll see you again very soon.